Hello, hello, hello. I have chosen the beautiful countryside of North London to present my new tutorial. Today, it's about managing expectations. So how to manage expectations, how to manage your own, but how to manage other people's expectations. So today, this tutorial is all about teaching you the skill of managing your own expectations and other people's expectations. It really is a skill. This is why today I want to spend maybe 10 minutes to explain to you how to do this properly. So I would be giving you two examples, the right example and to teach you the right way of doing it and the wrong example to teach you how not to do it. So let's get started. So what is an expectation? An expectation is a belief that something will happen. Another word for expectation could be standard, you know. Uh, usually who sets expectations? We do, people set expectations. How many people are usually involved with expectations? Well, usually there is a person who sets the expectation and then there's the person who will um, agree to, adhere to and follow the expectations set by person A. So how many different types of expectations are there? There are two. There are high expectations and low expectations. And it really is up to you to decide which you want to set. Okay? So now I am going to teach you how to set expectations. I'm going to show you how to set high expectations in story one and I'm going to show you how to set low expectations in story two obviously they will have different outcomes yeah so let's get started so how do we set high expectations well i've got uh, my cards out of my pocket now before we go into the method i need to introduce you to a matrix a model i created it myself it's called the the factor flower why? Because on this flower there are eight petals, therefore eight factors, plus an additional one right bang in the middle, which makes it nine. There are a total of nine factors to consider when setting high, when setting expectations, but we're concentrating on the green story, which is the good story, the healthy story. When setting high expectations. So here we go. So each petal refers to a factor and each factor is basically a topic to include in the brief of your expectations. Yeah? So let's get started. Should be fun. Fun, fun, fun. So the first factor is the situation. All right. So I'm person A and I'm talking to person B. Person A sets the standard and then person B, according to the story, which I'm about to, to uh, present to you, will decide whether or not they want to agree to the standards, to the expectations. Yeah. So let's get started. The situations. Well, I'm organizing a dinner party and I would love you to join us. Are you free this evening? Good. So far, so good. So obviously it's still early stage. I haven't yet given uh, person B a complete overview, but it's coming, you know, there are stages. So please bear with me. Number two, ne second factor to consider. So time, dinner will be served around seven o'clock. It would be great if you could arrive around six and it won't be a late evening because I have a very early start tomorrow. So I need to be in bed by midnight. Good. The story is shaping up, you know. I'm giving more and more information. The key thing when you uh, set expectations is to give as much information as possible in advance. So you're informing the person of, of your rules, basically. That's what it is, in advance so that they can make a, an informed decision whether or not they want to get involved with your event. Okay, let's carry on. Location. The party obviously will be um, 
taking place in my home. Um, it's not very far from where you live. I, I believe there's a couple of stops on the tube. Should take you no more than 10 minutes. And I live right opposite the tube station. If you're late or if you're delayed or if you get lost, um, let me know. Here's my address, here's my phone number. Yeah, so far so good. People, all together there would be four guests. So you, me and another two, yeah. So already you see with the first four factors, the story is starting to come to life. Person B, who I'm potentially inviting, right? They haven't decided yet, because there's still another few factors to go through, is kind of uh, getting the picture of what the evening they have been invited to could look like, yeah? Okay, similarities. So we all share the same passion for hiking. And this is why, this is why I have invited you as well. Purpose. I'm hoping that by the end of the evening, we will have um, decided to uh, organize a, a hiking trip uh, together for the summer. Yeah, that's the purpose of the evening. Uh, adaptations. Oh, by the way, I hope you don't mind, but um, the other two guests are vegetarian. So I've organized um, a meat-free um, dinner for this evening. I hope that's okay with you. Yeah. See, the more I talk, the more information I'm, I'm sharing with my potential guest, and the easier it will be for them to make a decision based on the information I've given them. And that's my script, right? That's my story. And these are my rules. And I am not going to be diverting from what I've said tonight at the party. What I've presented to my potential guests is what I'll be delivering. So it's a promise I'm making, yeah? Restrictions, oh, by the way, I have just one rule in my house. We don't talk about politics. Is that okay? So you're always, you're always checking with them because you're not imposing anything. You are just assertively, assertively explaining to the per person you're inviting what what the evening is going to be like after all you're the host so you decide you decide how you want to shape that party and then it's up to the guest to decide whether or not they want to be involved taking part and accept the invitation lastly lastly i hope i hope everything goes as as planned obviously there's always last minute changes or unexpected events but i've planned as much as i possibly could and i hope the evening goes well i hope we all get on well um would you like to come so this is it this is it i have gone through the nine factors yeah the the the, the, the factor flower gives me a framework to follow so that I don't forget anything, right? So, my guests has decided they want to join the party. Why? Well, partly because I have given them a very clear overview of what to expect. So, I have given clear rules and they know exactly what to expect. As the guest, as the host, I know exactly what I want from my guests and what I want the party to be like and because I was so um, clear about my my end goal and how I'm gonna get there my guests who have now accepted my invitation are also clear about what to expect so what I'm creating here is a, a healthy relationship between myself and my guests it's a bit like a code of conduct, right? I have set the rules on how to behave and how, yeah, and how I want them to, uh, yeah, to behave and conduct themselves in my house and they have accepted them. Therefore, they are likely to follow them. So the important bit here is this. If you set high expectations, right? And if you're guest or the person you're setting the high expectations for agrees to follow those expectations those expectations also become 
their expectations. And this is why, this is why usually when you set expectations, the people agree to them, then there's a healthy code of conduct between the two because they are kind of vibrating at the same level. One will set the standards, one will expect the other one to follow the standards. And this is why these two people will we, we'll get on fine. It's very unlikely there would be any problems there because they have, they're working within, within a framework and, and it's safe. It's safe and it makes both parties feel feel that they are being respected right so that's great so that is the best case scenario and these are the advantages of setting high standards yeah mutual respect mutual um, uh, 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 communication based on 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 good vibes yeah okay cool so that's the story number one See, I've done exactly what I said I would do. I have informed all my guests about what's going to happen. Of course they're going to say yes. Okay, cool. All done. So now, story number two. Well, story number two is a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game. This is how not to do it. Yeah? So we're still going to uh, follow the, the fact of flower uh, model. Yeah? But the informations I am going to give my potential guests are going to be loose, vague, airy-fairy, not very precise, the opposite of what I've done in story one. So here we go, just to give you an idea. Situation. Hey, I'm having a chill out this evening. Would you like to come? Okay. Time. I'm free all evening. So come over whenever you can. Loose plan, no. <laughs> Location, we'll start in my house and then we'll see where the evening takes us. <laughs> it gets worse. People, oh, uh, sorry, people, yeah. I've invited a whole bunch of people. The more the merrier, right? Okay, it gets worse. They're all, so similarities, they're all free spirits like us. You will love them. Okay. Purpose. It's going to be a fun evening. And we're just going to chill out. Right? Adaptation. Well, the neighbors might complain about the noise, but hey, if I can't have a party in my flat, where am I going to do it? <laughs> Restrictions. Bring anything you like. Bring anyone you like. As long as they are fun, it's all right. And last one. Change. Yeah, I've got no plan, you know, we'll go with the flow. So, as you can see, in this party, the chill out party, story number two, there are no plans. It's the opposite of story number one. There are no plans whatsoever, okay? So, if I was to ask you, okay, so what time are you supposed to come? You don't know. Where are you supposed to go? You don't know. Who is coming? You don't know. Why are they together? We don't know. What are they going to do together? We don't know, right? How long is it going to last for? We don't know, yeah? What are the things you can't do in that house? We don't know. So, because everything is open, right? There are no guidelines to follow. So, whoever is going to be accepting that chill out invitation, um, is in trouble and I'm going to tell you why because they have not they've not got anything to go by and therefore don't know what to expect they know roughly that there's a party but apart from that they don't know anything else so they do not know what to expect because no rules have been set up right so whoever's going to um, attend that party is likely is likely to be confused is likely to be uh disappointed is likely to be upset and therefore likely to blame yeah likely to blame of course they're gonna blame you they're gonna blame you for the things that 
you did not deliver, right? Here, with clear rules, there's a promise and you're delivering it. And your guest is expecting you to keep your promise. Here, no promise is made and therefore guests are left to imagine what the promise is and they get disappointed when the promise is not delivered. Makes sense, right? So that's basically, that's basically this. Unhealthy relationships, of course, they're going to end up arguing, blaming each other, right? So this is, this is the uh, tutorial about managing expectations. So in a nutshell, you've learned how to manage expectations, right? So the key thing when managing expectations is to set high expectations and to use the factor flower to set those expectations, to make sure you don't forget any element of your event. Now, just remember, right? When setting expectations, make sure they're high and make sure you deliver what you promised. Because if you don't, what's gonna happen? You're going to have a backlash. Just be prepared. Okay, that's all for me today. See you soon. Bye-bye.